Gordon Ryan is the king of no gi jiu-jitsu. With an impressive record of having 92 wins and John Donahue as his mentor, I went to New Wave Jiu-Jitsu to find out why. 17 hours of driving all the way from Minnesota to Austin, Texas led me to my destination, and I already had my first big problem. Gordon Ryan happened to be competing against Nicky Rod, so Donaher wasn't in town. This meant that his right-hand man, Gary Tonin, would be taking over the class instruction. We will be looking at three different rounds as New Wave prefers technical training over open roles. So if you want to see me take on multiple high-level athletes, don't skip anything. Round one begins and it's the most lenient as one guy is forced to play bottom and the other has to work on top. Now something to notice right away is that the mat space compared to how many people want to train is extremely limiting. So there won't be any wrestling for me, but you do get to see my scoop grip as I'm trying to pass his guard. I shoot my right knee to the mat so he's not able to lock up his half guard against me. And the next move is to move my knee to the outside of his hip. This lets me bring my chest to his stomach and I can easily put his leg over my shoulder. Now typically I use this movement for other nighttime activities, but it seems to work out pretty well for Jiu Jitsu as well, because I'm able to shuck his leg over my shoulder and then insert one hook to start working on his back. Now if you want to guarantee control but you can only throw in one hook, notice that I'm vining over the back of his leg and then I figure four. Then I roll back looking for the calf slicer. I'm trying to be fancy so I can fit in with New Wave, but I end up throwing us both off the mat and we have to reset. Now I enter the same way as I did before, trying to use some heavy knee pressure to pin it to the mat, but I'm also attacking his leg at the same time. After I'm able to shoot my right arm to his calf, I can safely fall back and start working the ankle lock. I use my left shin to push against his groin as a strong wedge and then posting my forehead. As long as I can keep his ankle trapped and I can bring my chest to the mat, this will make the submission much easier to finish. Then as I shoot my hips down to the mat, I get the tap. Now for the second part of this position with sparring, I had to start on bottom and either get a sweep or a submission. By shooting my left underhook in and then my right, I'm able to pull him towards me so I can start working up with the wrestle up attack. I'm able to push against him to create enough space that I can work up towards the body lock, then from here I can crumple him down to the ground and get an easy sweep. Now this time around, I decided to change things up. I was able to control his stomach and I brought my right knee down to the mat, once again locking out his hip position, but then I hopped to the other side. Now you're probably wondering why didn't I just take side control? I must be wanting to show everybody my 10 IQ play by instead trying to chase the back versus taking the easy points. I'm hunting for the rear naked choke, but my head gets pressed up against the wall. But not feeling like I want to be inside a womb, I push him away from the wall so I can start working on a different attack. And by different attack, I mean the exact same one, because I'm looking for another rear naked choke, but my opponent's doing a nice job using his elbow to frame against my leg and prevent me from getting my second hook in. Just as we saw earlier, I'm using back half to maintain control over his hip, but I won't be hunting for a calf slicer this time around. Instead, I pull against his face with my left arm. This can be used to bait him into a guillotine as we see here, but my opponent does a nice job by peeling my hand off of his neck. It's really not that hard to defend a guillotine, I just wish he'd tell everybody else that. Eventually I'm able to break him down and bring him to his hip, I lock in a rear naked choke, and I decide a concussion isn't worth it as I'm pushed against the wall. Then to end the round we go back to our white belt days of both trying to hunt for the same footlock and neither of us getting anything accomplished. A good first round at New Wave Jiu Jitsu. There's one thing that white belts fear more than anything else in this world, positional sparring. I know it's fun to just go on the mats and see red the entire time, but if you're actually trying to get better at jiu-jitsu, this is how you do it. For the next round, I had the pleasure of trying to submit my opponent from mount, or I had to escape his devastating top pressure and trying not to be waterboarded. So if this is your most common YouTube search, then pay attention. Anytime you're in a bad position, frames are the number one thing that you need to establish. For my first escape, it goes pretty well because I keep my elbows tucked, and as he goes to move, I'm able to leg pummel towards my right side and take an easy half guard. Now if you thought that looked pretty easy, pay attention to my opponent. He does a nice job placing his hands on my hips, which then allows him to bridge up and kip while pushing my hips away and even though I'm trying to lock underneath his legs, with enough time and effort, he's able to hit a successful kipping escape on me. While Basalt's Ben prefers to do a reverse kipping escape known as the Dolphin, it turns out this one's a little bit more effective. For my second escape, I start off in a really similar fashion where I'm trying to keep my elbows on the inside. But as my opponent locks underneath my legs, he's also trying to give me a fresh dose of mother's milk. He's also closed the distance with his hips that my hands are pretty useless. So pay attention to what I do with my feet to escape from here. My first movement is to move my right hip so I can bring my right foot in. 
This allows me to put my foot under his shin, then I can elevate his leg in turn with him, bring my knees in, and I'm safe from his mount attack. It may seem like you need a ton of flexibility for that, but really it's just some hip mobility and you can do it as well. There still have been no submissions between either me or my partner, so I really had to start turning it up. I'm not known for too many mount attacks, but I'm looking for Josh Barnett's cheeky footlock he can do when he pulls the leg up. Unfortunately, my partner isn't a day one white belt, so he just kicks his leg free and I have to go for something else. But he has some hip movement that would make any woman happy, and as he goes to bridge, it's extremely tough for me to hang on. As I fight to lock my legs up behind his back, he yeets me over, and I lose the position. Things didn't get too much better for me because on his next attack, he put me in a terrible spot where he had an underhook and he went to the head and arm, and I actually had to tap out due to the mother's milk. If you want to know how that submission works, make sure to check it on Google with your safe search on. Otherwise, your results may vary. Round theory would be similar where we're starting in mount, except for I had to go up against a full-time competitor who wants to make jujitsu his career. He starts off very hot by hitting a hard bridge, and I end up going for the guillotine over his chin. Then I remember that falling to guard to finish the choke isn't a good answer since we're doing mount sparring. And then when it was his turn to be on top, he put as much pressure as he could into my face, not wanting me to move at all. I was using the same escape method as I did before. I'm trying to go under his shin so I can get my elbow to lift up his knee. It turns out that he's seen this one before, because as I finally get my elbow in the right spot, he transitions to a quick armbar and he goes belly down. I probably could have fought it a little bit longer and tried rolling with him, but he got the tap. I made sure not to make that mistake twice, as the second time I tried it, I was able to go at the back door. Then I used it again to jack his weight up high enough that I could bait him to attack in my neck, so I could fight my way out into the front head position. But being under this guy was no fun task. He even clowned on me at one point as I went a little too high with my hips and he got out in like 10 seconds. When it was my turn to be on top of him, my goals were a little bit different. I'm a strong believer in heavy cross face pressure and I was going to let him know that. My second move was to isolate his right arm so I could pin it down to the mat and look for a little bit of a crucifix. We can see them scooping up his far side armpit and this is great because I'm able to set up arm bars, triangles, or even head and arm chokes. And while everything was looking pretty awesome for me, unfortunately I ran out of time so I wasn't able to do anything fancy to him. Overall, New Wave was a very interesting gym to visit. I wasn't able to film that much because of rules, and unfortunately wasn't able to meet John Donaher, but I still got some great knowledge from Gary Tonin. But the real question is, will this knowledge help me out at other gyms? I had some intense roles with many black belts on my trip, including world champions such as William Tackett, and I'm just getting started on my gym tours. So if you want to see how I do against other black belts in Austin, Texas, make sure to subscribe to the channel. This trip was also sponsored by xmarshall.com. If you want to get some great looking gear that'll help you in your jiu-jitsu game, make sure to check out their website and use promotion code TYLER10. Whether you want to pick up a rash guard, a gi, or some other equipment from them, everything they have will be very high quality. If you're not getting better jiu-jitsu, but at least you want to feel like you are, make sure to check out their website, pick up some clothing, and you have a much better experience.